see now, no roof. Everything came apart fairly easily once we revealed the screws for the ducting down each side. It turned out that there was a strip of hidden screws along the top and then a strip of hidden screws along the bottom. Once they were done it was just some plastic clips and um, this ducting all came off. So I was able to pull that off without ruining it just in case I do decide to change my mind later on down the track and use it again. So you can see here what we've got on the sides now. This is just some plastic sheeting. Yeah, plastic sheeting that seals in the ducting on the back side. There's some more foam insulation on behind those. Yeah, so that wasn't too much of a problem. It has now forced some more decisions, of course, what to do with the existing bus air conditioning, which I want to keep uh, in some capacity because Obviously, if I'm going to do any travelling around Australia or certainly even where I live now, summer gets bloody hot. And if I am driving, I want to be using the bus air conditioning. I don't want to be using the rooftop air conditioning and draining batteries and using solar power while I'm driving, that type of thing. So um, I've had to ever think about how I'm going to do that. Now, as I mentioned before, you can see down the back here, that's the uh, evaporator unit where the cool air starts from and it's ducted down each side and uh, went through this ducting up to the cabin at the front and that's how it got there. So uh, if I'm going to have, or I'm only ever going to be driving either on my own or with one passenger, so I only need that air conditioning at the front, in the front cabin. Um, I don't need it coming out any vents down here, so that's... Um, so I've got to think about how I'm going to get it from the back to the front um, but I also have to obviously keep in mind available space because when you're building your RV or your motorhome, um, space is king. You want to be maximising your space. The next consideration was um, where I'm standing now pretty much or to the side here. Um, this is where my uh, bathroom's going to be. So this is where my shower, this is where I'll be standing if I'm in the shower. Now obviously if the ducting was coming down through here, uh, that's not going to work. There's not a great deal of space here to, for, for any sort of overhead items or, or, or nozzles, shower nozzles and all that sort of stuff as it is. So ducting through here was just not going to work. So what that means is I'm only going to be running the ducting down the left side or um, of the bus, not the original ducting I don't think. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is you'll see from the evaporator, here's your evaporator down here um, and ducting here that went down the left side of the bus and you've got it the same on the right side. Um, what I've decided to do is I'm going to build on this left side of the bus um, a shallow set of uh, storage units or storage cupboards that will run right from the back all the way to the front and what I'll do is either not have any dividers between each of those cupboards or, or have a hole through the dividers anyway so that when all the doors are shut on those storage cabinets um, or cupboards it will then act as ducting that will get the air conditioning from the evaporator down the left side of the bus and, and through the ducting up at the, within the cabin and keep it cool while I'm driving. Which brings me to the next modification that I want to make which is to the evaporator itself so um, I'll take you down there now and um, show you what I've got planned. Okay so what you can see here this is the evaporator unit I've all I've really done is opened it up so it was enclosed like this I've opened that up your actual evaporator unit is up the back here um, above this foam insulation layer I think it might actually be that is just foam insulation and then what you can see here, this you'd consider this as like a cool box. So this area fills up with cold air that comes out of the evaporator. And then you've got four blower motors that each go to ducting that goes to the down the side to the bus. Now the thing is, the ones on this side, these are the left side, both pipe to two ducts that then go down the left side of the bus. And then these two go to the right. So what I'm going to do, I don't need those, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect these two. I'm going to unplug them and remove them and remove the ducting that goes from this box to the side and then what I'm going to try and do is modify this box so I'll bend it at this point down and along so that it uh, 
gives me a little bit more headspace here above the bed where the bed is so hopefully that works and uh, we'll try that out and uh, I don't see any reason why it won't so I think that's my next move and I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when we've made some more progress you can see there solar panels are now fitted to the roof what we've got is uh, three solar panels in total uh, one two and three um, I've just welded up some frames out of 30mm by 30mm galvanised square tube to hold those up there and the panels actually bolt to tabs that I've welded onto the tubes if you're interested. See if I can get a close up without actually climbing up the ladder and showing you. So there's the configuration there. Fairly simple. Um, and what I've done here is, um, so it mounts obviously on the gutter, you can see on this downpipe here, um, it sits on the gutter, I welded a captive nut into there, and then there's just a plate underneath with a bolt that goes up into the captive nut, a little bit of rubber just to protect the paint, and that holds it there. Um, in terms of structural soundness, uh, it's not too bad. This was the second configuration that I'd come up with. The first was just too flimsy. Um, in terms of side-to-side -side movement, there is zero. Uh, it's really good in that respect. Uh, forwards and backwards, I do still get a little bit of movement. Um, so I may end up putting cross brace across there and all the way down on both sides um, to make it one big solid unit and that would take that play out. It hangs over a little bit at the front as you can see. Um, there's the front of the bus. Uh, I don't think that's really going to be an issue so I made sure it was fairly solid. I'm considering also because I do generally tend to over engineer things of putting uh, a little bracket that goes from the bar up and onto the top of the panel as well although that might be overkill. So anyway I just thought I'd only just finished that I haven't painted up the uh, welds yet so I just thought I'd show you. Um, so that's the panels now mounted to the roof uh, in terms of what type of panels they are on this and the specs on those I'll put that up on the screen uh, now so they're, they're 327 watt panels each so that gives me a total of uh, 3 times 3 20 was at uh, 981 981 watts uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, I'll, I'll display the information from those panels on the screen so you can uh, see that if you're interested. Um, they're not wired up yet. Um, the wires individually from each panel will go through um, a hole on the roof and uh, I'll show you when I do that. Anyway, that was just a quick update. I wanted to show you. I've only just finished that just seconds ago. Cheers.